So today we're gonna to be talking about something that I think a lot of people, they don't really think too much about, and that is the actual boom pull itself. And they kind of just think it's a stick. So today's episode of Sound 101, Buyer's Guide to Boom Pulls. Now, the first thing I can tell you guys is a boom pull is not just a stick. There's a lot of subtle nuances, and if you use it on a daily basis, you really should think about these kinds of nuances because it's gonna make the job a joy versus making the job a pain in the ass. All these boom poles are boom poles I have used throughout my career. I actually bought this first boom pole when I first started out, and I can tell you now, I hate everything about this boom pole. So we're gonna start with the cheapest one, and the cheapest one, I'm gonna start at the butt of the boom pole. I'm already showing you guys a boom pole that's held together with electrical tape. That's a good sign that it's a terrible boom pole. This end cap, the glue on it immediately like dies. And as soon as you start to compress this thing, this thing becomes a pop gun. And that's the last thing you want on a set is to compress your boom pole and like shoot the gaffer. The second other problem with this boom pole is it comes in a five eights. So the first thing you have to do is buy a five eights to three eights adapter. So while this boom pole probably retails for about $45, $50 on Amazon, once you start buying all the extra little features needing to make it work, it does not end up being a cheap boom pole. Once you start adding it all up, you're at $75 uh, for this boom pole. And at $75, you're not too far off from the $100 boom poles. And at $100, you start to see some different kind of features. At the $100 price range, you actually get a boom pole with actual knuckles. And what you do is here, you loosen up that collar and you can actually now slide the pole. And we've actually already shown you guys on the channel how to put a cable to this particular boom pole. Or if you're doing like say wireless booming, you can actually just mount a transmitter and not even care about the fact that there's no cable. For the most part, this kind of pole is always gonna be aluminum. You're not gonna find carbon fiber at this price point at the $100 to $150 price range. You may still find that they have foam on the handles. It's not a deal breaker. I don't really care too much about the foam. I usually put gloves on my hand anyway, so I can slide it in and out of the leather glove. When you buy this kind of boom pole, make sure you can remove the bottom so you can actually run that cable out the bottom. These kinds of poles probably actually would fit 90% of your production needs, especially with the way wireless transmitters have gone and the fact that booms now are way more wireless than they are wired. So you don't necessarily need a cable pole, but if you are like me, I still like a cable pole. I've been using this pole right here. Uh, probably for the last couple of years and I'm really happy with it. I may go get it upgraded because when you get to the professional boom poles, you'll get a full size XLR connector on the bottom. And what you can do is also get this changed out to go with a right angle. If you want to have a transmitter stuck on there as a counterweight. So far in my life, I've just always used right angle connectors on the back of this. It's not a big deal. It is internally cabled and on a good quality pull, what you do, you can shake it and you'll barely hear that cable. I only hear it right in this area, but if I would extend it, it actually sound even better. Typically when you go with these kind of poles, if you want internally cabled, it's like an extra 50 to $100 depending on what brand you get. I think the internal cable is necessity uh, because so often you get in a situation where you already have a lot of wireless in the, in the area on the lavaliers. Adding booms just makes it a little bit harder to coordinate. Nothing beats a good uh, cabled pole at the end of the day because the dynamic range of cable is exactly what the microphone is. You're not limited by the technology and the preamps of your transmitter. But really, I think you should only look at this price range, about the $100 to about $400. Any time that you need to extend and shrink your pole throughout the day, it's time that you have other people waiting around for you. And the last thing you want on set is the phrase, hold for sound. And I hate to say that because it sounds like we're always being hated on when we're on a film set, but but it's true. It's your everyday tool. You know, just like the microphone you use for every single day, you want it to sound good. The ergonomics of how you do your job are just as important as the sound quality you produce. So there you have it, three different kinds of boom poles, sub $100, the $150 price range, and the 200 and up price range. Again, I truly do believe just ignore anything under $100. You're not gonna buy anything that you truly will last you very long. If you think you should be using a pole like this on a daily basis, you're a full-time sound mixer, or at least you're shooting four to 10 times a month, definitely just go for the real pole. Get a good one, treat it right, and it'll last you a lifetime. Leave a comment below and tell us what you want our next videos to be about. Don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe on all social media channels. And there you go. I'm Andrew from Daily Microphones. Thank you for watching.